Secondary tertiary officer, season 22, and you are his Elaine Benton, correct? Yes. Got it right. Thank God, I am saying. <laughs> and uh, she is showing right now two pieces at Naked in Jersey, is the name of the show, at La Vie Galerie. So tell me a little bit about your inspiration for the piece of art that you created, and what media did you use? So I'm a pastel painter, and one of the things I like to do when using pastels is have the background come through some of the colors that uh, are on there. Uh, this is a model that I painted, and she made me think of Coney Island. And the time that I was painting her, I could not stop thinking that she's sitting on the beach, uh, probably not Coney Island nude, but Ooh. sitting on a beach, and uh, it was probably... Sandy Hook? It could be. Ah, Sandy Hook. <laughs> and it was, we were probably in the spring, moving towards summer, and I, as I was painting her over the number of sessions, I had that image in my mind. And um, as I said, I like to have this sheet. This is a purple piece of paper behind her. Mm -hmm. And um, I let that stay for the backgrounds with no other things there and have it come through for some of the skin tones. Um, it's a very strong piece. She looks very relaxed, but it's a very strong commanding pose. So tell me a little bit about that, because you, you met the model. I and met the model, you with her. painted with a group of people. Okay. Um, I found that the best way to get the model look good and natural in a pose is Listen to, to kind of have the model act naturally, move around, and she'll come or he'll come into a position that is natural for him or herself. And that is more natural than as if we were to say, sit down, put your hand on your cheek, or, or whatever. Mm -hmm. We might give a more... Um, of a direction, maybe? Yeah, some direction, mm -hmm. but generally we hope that the person is able to move around, keep the directions in mind, but move into the position in a graceful, natural way. And that is a good tip for someone you who wants to be a good model, maybe perhaps, as a new career. You know, there is a tip. So now, let's move on from this piece of art to this one. This is a totally different piece of art. She's more relaxed than this one. Okay. So come this close to me and tell me a little bit about this, because it's not even uh, uh, like more like a vibrant color, I would say. Yes. Yeah. Well, some of this has to do with the toning that I put on the piece of paper that this is on, um, which we call a support. Uh, it's not canvas, it can be a board, it can be a special paper, and you usually have either pumice that's on there when you buy it or you put the pumice on yourself. So what I did here was, this paper already had some pumice on it. I took wash, which I like to work with, and toned the paper that color. And it's a fairly vibrant color, um, which I like to do. And also, this is a model who was painted in a group situation, so we had to agree upon how we wanted the pose and also find a spot where the pose speaks to you so that you get something that you feel has some life and maybe a bit of a story. This particular model uh, emotes usually and there's some kind of feeling about her that yes. I hope comes through on the it page, here, okay. on the paper wrap. Yeah. Um, now, I want to know, sorry to interrupt you, I want to know because I was just curious, I was a model myself. But like for those of you who doesn't know about modeling and sitting down and posing and painting and all these things, how much or how, how long this particular piece of work took you? Or what was the pose, uh, how long was the pose okay. for this model? So I probably, I'm going to say that we had three or four sessions with this model. Um, and then something that I do oftentimes is I'll ask the model, would they take the pose in a robe? because I don't always get to finish everything. Now obviously the robe means that I would have to finish the body that's going to be covered in the photo. On your own? Yes, I can take the photo and then that also helps with things that maybe I don't develop as much while the model's posing, which would be the chair, uh, where the chair is positioned. This is a fairly simple composition, but sometimes it can be more complicated. Uh, and of course, you know, you want to have as much of her face mm -hmm. expressing something uh, as much as possible. Which is my next question, sorry to interrupt you again. I want to know, since you said I want the face, I want to know because if you see over here, you guys might, might know or might not know, 
that it's a lot of details that you have. Right. And this is a post that it was like three times, three hours each time? About or? three hours each So it's like we're talking about nine hours, right. and in nine hours you were able to capture so much details. Tell me about how difficult is that for an artist to create and to capture so much detail in such a short post. Uh, well, you know, it's, for me it's not as easy as one would hope. And it's not just the detail, actually it's the positioning on the paper or the canvas that's the first problem that you might encounter. Yeah. Oh, it's too low, oh, it's too high, and cutting off top of the head. Um, and you want to get it, obviously, to be where you want it to be, so that's the first part that you do. I think once you have the composition down to your liking, mm -hmm. the details are like the icing on the cake, yeah. for me anyway, and I think for most people. Uh, so there's a lot of enjoyment in putting in the details, and, and not so difficult because you're enjoying it so much. Because you're an expert. <laughs> <It's like we're laughs> <not>. Well, <laughs> practice is everything. So right. the more you do it, the better you become. There you go. Another tip for those of you who want to become an artist. Elaine, thank you so much for being part of the show. And we are here at the Preston Lopez Show, Season 23. Okay. We'll see you next week on the all-new Preston Lopez Show. You're sexy as fuck. But you're sexy as fuck.